Music has been something pretty central in my life. My mom had us all learn piano as young kids, and it's something that continued to grow in me as I went through college and when I worked at camp. I led a lot of the worship for adoration and mass and the different retreats that would come out. You love to hold small ones. Being able to incorporate worship into my life was truly has been truly transformational and helping other people to understand what worship is. Again, I think back to Mary's Magnificat where she brings Jesus and her first words when Elizabeth says, blessed are you, she says, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. She goes straight into a song of praise and worship for who God is and what He's doing in her life. And that's kind of what I see my worship to be like, as I want it to be an exclamation of God's glory, His goodness, not just in my life, but in the lives of the people around me. Your grace, like my poor heart. Rachel. I am one of six kids and I grew up in a small town in Michigan. We were homeschooled all throughout our years growing up and that was really beautiful actually because it gave us the opportunity to grow in our faith together as a family. Uh, my family growing up we would pray a lot of nightly rosaries together, go to daily mass, um, spend time in worship together and prayer and so they just really instilled in us a desire for God and for that intimacy with Him even from when we were young. So in high school, I began to experience just a lot of different challenges in my life, including a time where I was really anxious and depressed and actually ended up developing an eating disorder among that time. And I was began to get a little upset with Jesus, but I wanted to be more like Him and I wanted to pursue Him in this. And I really wanted the truth of who I was and what was happening at that time, because I had a lot of people telling me different things, telling me to do things, and I was afraid, very afraid. And I just wanted to know that He was with me and that there was a truth that He wanted me to know. And so during that time, I began to read Scripture more, and I began to notice Our Lady a little bit more, that desire in me to understand my own femininity. and. I needed, I feel like I needed a mom to just teach me things and to help me love myself in a healthy way. And so I actually began to, my own personal devotion to her, I began to pray to her and ask her to help me, to form me, to have a healthy relationship with myself and with other people, because I knew that she formed Christ. Like she made him into the man who ended up dying for us and rising, like she taught him how to live. And I really wanted to know how to live in a way of love and truth like he did. And I was like, what better way to teach me than his own mother? So I began to just, I wasn't even very consistent with the rosary. I just remember I would just spend time with her and tell her what I was afraid of. Um, I would tell her how I was feeling and I would just ask her, Mary, please show me how to see myself, how Jesus sees me and help me to be like him. And I really felt like she just kind of wrapped me in her womb in that time. and just like created a very safe place. I just remember having uh, one experience in particular. I was just looking at an image of her and I just felt her love come over me and just let me know that I was safe and protected and that she was gonna work all things for my good. So like I, the school I wanted to go to was in Florida, Ave Maria University, like her namesake. And so I was like, Mary, if you want me to go, I, I need you to help me uh, continue to choose life for myself in these different areas of my life. And so I really felt her grace and helping me to choose life and to continue to do the things that were good for me and to, and she really just gave me a love for Jesus that began to burn in my heart that I was willing to do whatever it costs to love Him and live for Him and that conquered a lot of fear in my life and gave me a passion of following Him uh, because she showed me how good He is. Our school did a lot of like feast celebrations for her, including like the Feast of the Annunciation. We always would have this big party. And I met a lot of other people who had done 
who had a love for her, who had done consecrations, and our school had perpetual adoration, daily mass. And so it really just helped me to continue to grow in my own faith and passion for Jesus. And then realizing I took a class on Mary as Mother of God, so realizing more her role in salvation, her role as the Mother of God, which helped me just to grow in greater intimacy with her and knowledge of her. And so being just surrounded in a community of people and getting to learn about the faith in deeper ways uh, was really growthful for me and helping me to know her and Jesus more. In 2018, I moved out to East Texas to work at a Catholic camp as a missionary. I kind of wanted to do a gap year after my college experience to decide what I wanted to do. And that summer I decided to do my first Marian consecration. I had a devotion to her, but I never had thought about consecrating myself to her. And so I did the 33 Days to Morning Glory, and it ended on a really random small feast day of hers of Our Lady of Humility, which I thought was beautiful because I always wanted to grow in humility. And so I did that consecration and it was a really, nothing spectacular super happened, I would say, during it, but I felt in my heart just a greater love for her and for Jesus again throughout my life, just this growing passion for Him as I began, I began to realize that her whole job and role is to increase the love of Christ in my heart. And so after that consecration, I feel like there is more fire in my heart for Jesus and a greater awareness of His presence in my life. And it just gave me a little boost as I went off to East Texas to work at this camp to know that I had given my life to her, to Jesus, through Mary. And I knew that she would be a mom to me as I left my family. Everything I'd known before went to this uh, camp in the middle of nowhere, Texas. I really felt like she was there with me as I left my family behind. She was there at this camp with Jesus just to welcome me into this new life of discovering what my purpose was, what my mission was, and continuing to guide me and form me. I think during that time of formation with her, she just really, I began to be empowered in who I was because uh, she showed me through Jesus like who He was and who I was as a daughter and what I had access to as a daughter. And I remember there was one time I was started to pray the rosary. I was really fascinated by the joyful mysteries just because her enunciation, her yes was so powerful and she kind of showed me how each small yes I make has like a ripple effect in the world around me. And so I would meditate a lot on the joyful mysteries. And there was one time around Christmas when I was at camp that I was particularly meditating on the birth of Christ. And Mary just really came to me and showed me that her role in my life at that time was to help birth the promises of God. She kind of showed me how like when she gave birth to Jesus, she wasn't broken. She remained a virgin. It was a beautiful, smooth breaking into the world of this promise of God, the fulfillment of her son has come, the savior of the world has come. And in that she kind of showed me that it was okay and good for me to have these promises of God in my heart, these desires and dreams that I had to, to live for him, to burn for him, to bring him to the world. And she showed me that her role is to help birth that in my life in a very smooth and easy way that wouldn't break me. And so I could entrust myself to her in these dreams of my heart and trust that when the time came for them to come about, she would be there and it wouldn't break me, um, but she would be there to make it a smooth and peaceful process of birth and new life. So after that first consecration, I decided that was something I wanted to continue to do, continue to invest her into my life so that I could receive more of Christ. And so I started doing consecrations once a year. Sometimes I would do novenas throughout the year as well, just to help me focus on her and receiving the love that she had and the formation that I felt like I was going through with her. So while I was at camp, I got involved with Encounter School of Ministry, which is a two-year school that empowers and equips people to demonstrate God's love through the Holy Spirit. And during that time, I did the school online uh, two years, and it just really began to set my heart on fire for Jesus and to empower me more in the Holy Spirit and direct my heart more to what the Lord wanted to do in my life. And I had this dream in my heart that maybe someday I could help start a school that was associated with Encounter or somehow be a part of it in some way. And so during that time, the, one of my small group leaders discerned starting a school in Dallas. 
and he reached out to me and asked if I would consider moving to Dallas to be on the leadership team. And I was so excited. I was like, this is a dream of my heart, but I don't know how it's going to work out. I don't know anyone in Dallas. I don't even, my family's not here in Texas. I don't know how this could happen, but I was like, I'll pray about it. And he recommended that I do a Marian consecration and ask her to come through for me if this was something the Lord wanted me to do. And so he recommended one called Mary's Mantle, which is to Our Lady of Guadalupe. And so I decided to do it. And in that time, I felt very prompted by the Holy Spirit to be very bold with Mary and just give her all that was on my heart for this. So I asked her um, if I was meant to be in Dallas and help with this school, that I needed a house and a job within the 46 days of this novena. And so, you know, the novena, I missed days. She recommended fasting. I didn't quite fast all the time. And I was like, oh no, I'm not doing this perfectly. Maybe she won't come through. But she came through perfectly, like to the T. She provided me with a job, a house that's five minutes from the church where I help teach with Encounter, all within the 46 days. And so the consecration, I ended it on the Feast of the Annunciation because I wanted to give my fiat to the Lord and what He wanted to do next in my life. So on that feast day, I said yes to her, and I said yes to the Lord, and I said yes to moving to Dallas. And so within a month, I was able to move, um, started a new job, got situated in a house, and was able to start being on the leadership team for the Encounter School. Yeah, so once moving here, I remember I went to Mass at the church that I go to after I said yes, and I was walking right out of the small chapel, and I saw they had an image of Our Lady of Guadalupe right there as I was exiting, and it just for me was a sign that this is the church that she wanted me to be at, that this was the right move for me. Again, I was terrified. It was a new city. I didn't know what I was doing. But she was there to kind of greet me as I started my new life in Dallas. And ever since then, I feel like Our Lady of Guadalupe in particular, her mantle, I just have increased a devotion to her. I know a lot of people, when they uh, do consecrations, they get uh, chains to remind themselves of that they're trusted to her. I didn't feel particularly called to do that, but instead I got a ring. Uh, to remember my that I'm a daughter of Mary and just as a reminder of her presence with me and that whenever I begin to doubt that I made the wrong move or this wasn't meant to be, I, I remind myself of like, this is all, I'm here because of her. <laughs> if she hadn't paved the way, I wouldn't be where I am today. And she's just kind of made herself known in the small things that have happened since moving here um, with the school and just providing me different opportunities to serve the Lord. And she's helped me to see what my giftings are, um, what the Lord is doing, His love for me, and that how I can express all the love that's in my heart for Jesus in the world, because that's really what she does. She helps us to express Jesus in the world and His love and His glory. And so there's just been multiple times where as I've continued to heal in my life as well, there's been times where especially on her feast day, my mom would always say, Mary loves to give good gifts on her feast day. So even just recently on this past feast of the Assumption of Mary in August, I was coming out of Mass and I ended up having this weird panic reaction out of nowhere. And I was, I remember being kind of upset and being like, I thought I was over this and it's the Feast of the Assumption. Why am I stressed and afraid? Leading to me doing some deeper thought and into deeper reflection, which led to me doing, at Encounter, we have something called inner healing sessions. So it led me to a place of actually deeper healing. So this, it ended up being like a gift and it opened my voice and it opened my heart and greater freedom with the Lord. And I'd almost say I'm not the same person that I was because of that experience. And she just allowed me to experience that slight moment of fear to highlight a place where I needed Jesus's healing. And in that, I was able to experience great freedom uh, to continue to operate in the ways the Lord is asking me to serve Him uh, here in Dallas. The image of Our Lady Guadalupe has kind of followed me around in Dallas as well. There's been times when I I'm asked to go do music somewhere, I'm a little nervous, and I'm like, I need the comfort of someone that I know there. And I get there and I see a picture of Our Lady Guadalupe. And I'm like, Mom's here, it's gonna be okay. I know someone here who's here to support me. And so she kind of follows me around in that way. I also have a small image of her that I would take to work with me. I work at a private office and I would just take a small picture of her and put her on the desk. And a lot of times my clients would come to me and they would be like, where does your joy come from? 
And I'm like, well, it comes from Jesus and it comes from Mary. Like she brings me the joy of Christ because she was such a joyful person because she carried Christ himself and got to live with him. Uh, she helps me to be a mother in the workplace as I take care of the different clients that come in. One of the gifts that I've been growing in and I feel like the Lord has anointed in my life is the gift of prophecy, just being able to receive God's heart for people. And I feel like Our Lady has been a huge part of that because she was a prophet. She carried Christ. And my favorite verse in Scripture is when Elizabeth said to her, Blessed is she who believed that was spoken to her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And just the importance of us receiving the words of God in our life, which is a lot what prophecy does. We're receiving the words of life and glory and revelation that the Father has for us and for different people and situations. And so Mary really helps me to see the Father's heart, to receive His words of life for myself, but then also for the different people that I minister to. So in my job, I've prayed about how to incorporate hearing God's voice and spreading His love to people in more of like a public professional workplace. And I realized that my clients, lots of times for their birthday or on Christmas, I would write them notes. And during those times, I would ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit and our Blessed Mother just to help highlight different clients to me around the time of Christmas or birthdays and to receive just a message of consolation and encouragement to give to them. And I know many of my clients would uh, come to me and be like, we've kept all your notes of encouragement. It's, it's usually very simple, but it's just like, Jesus, what do they need to hear today? And I would just kind of write it on a note and give it to them like, happy birthday. And I feel like Jesus wants you to know this. And they would always be so touched by that. And for me, that was just my way of partnering with the Holy Spirit and bringing His love to them and His care and His encouragement and consolation to know that there's a God who sees them and loves them. Music has been something pretty central in my life. My mom had us all learn piano as young kids. And it's something that continued to grow in me as I went through college. And when I worked at camp, I led a lot of the worship for adoration and mass and the different retreats that would come out. And throughout the years, even now, I don't play as much classically anymore. I focus more on worship. And that's just a part of my heart that the Lord has been growing. And that's my way of giving glory to God, of that time of adoration, of praise, of proclaiming who He is, what He has done in my life, what He is doing in my life. And with that, a lot of songs have also been birthed. Um, just these prayers in my heart as I spend time with Him and thinking of Him, meditating upon Him, and even thinking about Mary as well. She shows me who Jesus is. I find that these songs, these prayers, kind of like erupt and come out of my heart of praise and love to, to God. I don't have to run. I don't have to be afraid You are my mother and you know my name Oh, you love me Your small one So within your arms I'll stay My name is Michael O'Neill and I'm the Miracle Hunter and today we're talking about some of the miraculous images of the Virgin Mary from around the world. One of my favorite stories of the Virgin Mary, and it's kind of on the level of Our Lady of Guadalupe, who left that lasting image for St. Juan Diego. There's another image like this, and it's actually found in Colombia. There was a woman named Maria Mueces de Quiñones, and in the year 1754, she was walking amongst Las Lajas, or the flagstones, when she was caught in a snow, in a, in a rainstorm. She was running to a cave to, to seek uh, protection from that rainstorm, and her daughter got there first. Now, her daughter was very sickly. She was deaf and mute. And all of a sudden, she started exclaiming, I hear the Virgin Mary. And sure enough, they ran away from that spot in fear. They ran uh, to Itapiales, where they were from, and the townspeople came back with them. And uh, when they did come back, they discovered an image of the Virgin Mary that was emblazoned on the cave wall where they were about to go in. 
And this is an image of the Virgin Mary. It looks like it's in Spanish style from the 17th century. And it has the mother and child with St. Dominic and St. Francis depicted in the same spot. And this may look like a painting at first, but scientists have actually cored into that image and found that the color goes seven feet deep. And so no, no known uh, scientific process can produce color in rock. This is considered a miracle locally and a miracle for the world that's been approved by the Catholic Church. And that was Our Lady of Las Lajas in uh, Kidara Canyon in the year 1754.